What's going on everyone? Jimmo back in the booth and today we're going to be spraying this Subaru rally car a single stage yellow. Now we'll be joined by my friend Everett in the booth who is an experienced painter and is going to be laying this down and showing us what this is going to look like. Um, most of the videos you've seen from my channel and probably many others uh, are a little different in the sense they'll have a multiple step system with the base coat which is the color going down first and then the clear coat. So in a single stage you have that color mixed into the clear coat for a one step application. Now I do say one step application there will be one additional step we're going to do here which is going to save us a little bit of money and that's the main reason why. So we'll talk about what's about to go down. You'll see a lot of black primer there on, on the back end and there's a few darker colors throughout the entire vehicle so we're just going to put down a white sealer over top of that and that's just, just going to allow for better coverage with the paint. So this white sealer is a lot less expensive than the single stage product. So it's more of a cost saving step here. What you could do with single stage in most cases is just put down your paint first and then those areas will get an additional coat of paint and it's going to cover. But we want to save a little bit of money because as you can see it's a bit of a budget job. We're leaving the handles in and um, it's just uh, it's kind of one of the things you'll run into a single stage paint you'll, you'll see the most common use for them is on economical jobs and fleet vehicles. So it's a a much quicker way to apply the paint. It's uh, quite a bit easier, especially with solid colors. There are metallic single stages. However, the con metallic control isn't quite uh, as friendly as a base clear system. So you'll see this more commonly used with solid colors. Now he is applying the sealer here with a 3M AccuSpray paint gun which is designed for the application of primers and sealers. And we've got two booths going on. So in one booth, we've got the vehicle body. And in the other booth, we've got the bumpers, the spoiler, and a few little grill inserts. Now, the mixture of this product is going to be very similar to clear coat. So it's going to have a hardener and in most cases also a reducer. So it needs to be activated before you spray it, which is going to limit the shelf life on it. So we're going to pour it off into two separate containers here so we can keep spraying and not have to run back and forth to the mixing room to refill uh, unnecessarily. So you only want to activate what you plan on using. And again, just like any other clear coat, you're going to use hardeners and reducers based on the size of the job. Now, since we're doing a complete, we're going to use slow reducers and slow hardeners. So we have to quick tack off after the sealer and then we can start firing on our single stage. And again, this is like clear coat. It's going to have a sticky like property to it. It's not going to dry completely in between coats. So we're going to go for two coats optimally. So we'll put them on very wet. Well, not very wet. I'll be careful when I say that because I don't want to see it running off the panel. You put it on too wet, you'll end up with runs. But if you put it on too dry, it's going to look pebbly and it's not going to flow out. You'll get some texture in there. So you want to spray it like clear coat, which is usually done at a little higher of a pressure, and you just want to get that nice, slick, even flow.
Now, single stage paint, similar to base clear, you're gonna find that the transparency is a little hit and miss, depending on the color. You, you know, if you were working with a black or a white here, it would probably be guaranteed a two coat coverage over any color underneath. With these yellows and some reds and blues, you're gonna have some transparency issues. So two coats is generally gonna be enough, but uh, if you have the correct ground coat, such as a white here, then you can be assured that everything's gonna go a little smoother. Now one of the main differences in terms of quality is that a single stage is not going to provide the same level of UV protection as a clear coat job, a base clear. But with single stage paints you can actually apply a clear coat over top of them to enhance that protection. However, usually if you're picking a single stage paint it's because it's more of an economical job and you're just looking to get something fixed up as quick as possible and uh, as low cost as possible. So that's why I say they're very common on fleet vehicles, whether it's a branded Coca-Cola truck or Home Depot or something you see, they'll generally stick with a single stage paint line or vehicles such as you know, rally cars that may be getting scratched up on a weekly basis and you wanna cut down some of the time that it's gonna take to get it fixed up and back on the road. So we are using the Develbus Tecna Pro Light on this, which uh, is a phenomenal gun. So when you're spraying single stage, you're gonna wanna use a gun that is good with clear coats. And uh, you'd probably, if you had the choice of a base or a clear coat, make sure you're leading towards the clear coat gun side of things. However, I mean, most guns are pretty versatile that they can spray a lot of different things quite well. And the Tecna Pro Light is definitely one of the most versatile guns you'll come across you can see a full review of that on the channel. So you can see that we're getting pretty quick coverage with this product. So it's one coat and uh, we're pretty well there. So this is a product from BASF, it's RM's Uno as in one step application, I assume, but uh, don't quote me on that. So you want to try and get the first coat to go down as nice as possible. So you're going to spray it and try and get it to flow out and not go on dry. So I've always tried to describe spraying clear coat 
and single stage will be the same way. It's almost like spraying hot wax. And you know, as you get it down, it's trying to dry and you want it to keep flowing out in one consistent application before one part of it dries and then you're spraying over a bit of you know, dry product. So you want everything to go down as wet as possible and that's controlled best by the hardener and the reducer choice. So the slower that you choose, the longer that you have to apply, but also the longer that your drying time is going to be and the time that you have to coat it in between. So once it's covered, we're gonna put on a second coat and then that's it. So the second coat's gotta go down as perfect as possible. And if there's any flaws in it, then we will just sand them out and polish them just like clear coat, any dirt nibs, anything to that effect. Uh, the main difference, I guess, would be that since the color is in the clear coat, if you were to start sanding too much, then you could sand and it could become, you could sand enough pigment to make it transparent and you may see that spot. But in most cases, you can just sand and polish any defects out without a problem. So we'll speed up the second application here and you can have a look at his starting and stopping points. Um, everybody's a little different on where they begin and end and it sometimes depends on the vehicle. If you're missing a panel, sometimes it's easier to start in one place versus the other. But uh, usually back to front, top to bottom is how I like to roll and it looks like that's how Everett decided to do things today. And uh, that's it. So everything is looking pretty hot here. Um, let me know what you guys think and hopefully enjoy this. Leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.